And he's the only way to get you out of here. But that's why he came. Now, I just want to say a couple of things. Um, when Jesus rose on the third day, the gospel, says, the gospel is this. It's found in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 and 4. Paul says, this is what I have shared, or taught you uh, of first importance. That Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures. That's what we've just talked about. He paid the price. Paul goes on, was buried and rose on the third day according to the scriptures. And, and, and that's critical. In other words, he rose on the third day. That's what Easter's all about. Um, the fact that he, God raised him from the dead. In other words, God was saying when he raised him that I'm satisfied that the price has been paid. The price, uh, for, uh, the price for sin has been paid. The debt has been canceled. And he raised Jesus as a, uh, uh, because of that. A grave could not hold a righteous man. And God raised him from the dead. So, so uh, what we have to understand as a result of that is that the price for sin has been paid. Has it been paid for you? Have you appropriated what Jesus has done? Have you gotten off your knees in the smoke-filled room uh, on the eighth floor and followed him into safety? Have you, have you uh, been born from above by God Almighty through the agency of the Holy Spirit? Because if you haven't, you're still the possession of Satan. You see, the plan of salvation hasn't worked for you. Um, the th millennia that it took for God to find Abraham, to get his seed into the earth, to find somebody with a body who he could work with, uh, all of that has gone for naught for you. Uh, for Jesus being born in the manger, a deliverer. Um, people need to take advantage of that. Um, let's conclude with just one final um, for, uh, scripture. And it's the classic one that you see uh, when an extra point is kicked at a football game. Somebody will be in the stand saying, holding up a sign saying, John 3.16. Here's what John 3.16 reads. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, shall not burn to a crisp in that eighth floor room in the apartment building, shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. In other words, Jesus, when he was raised from the dead, is alive. He's alive today. He is continuing to be the deliverer. He's continuing to offer uh, being born from above the way he was to absolve you from sin. Uh, by believing on him, you shall not perish, but you shall have eternal life. In other words, he's offering not only uh, freedom from sin, but eternal life, living forever. I'm going to conclude with this comment. Maybe I won't conclude with this comment. I was watching a Larry King show. Larry King, as you know, is the controversial uh, interview specialist on television. And he had a um, well-known uh, Christian minister, Rick Warren, well-known uh, author of several uh, blockbuster books uh, about uh, Christianity, as his guest. And as you know, uh, first of all, you know Larry's business is controversy. You probably also know that Larry is Jewish. So as the interview was going on, Larry was a, a smiling cobra. He was just waiting for Rick Warren to put his foot in the noose. And all of a sudden, Rick made a comment, and Larry said, Rick, are you telling me that if I reject Jesus Christ, I'm going to go to hell? Is that what you're telling me? It was one of those moments. And, and Rick Warren said, why, Larry... Why would you reject Jesus Christ? He's, he's going to give you a beautiful life on earth. He's going to forgive all of your sins. He's going to heal your body. And he's going to give you life eternal in heaven with him and the Father forever. Why would you reject him? And Larry looked at uh, Rick Warren for about 30 seconds and said, I think I'll take another call. 
That's the response that people get when they understand the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, they either bail in or they bail out. Larry King, of course, God bless him, uh, bailed out. Uh, it was an interesting encounter. But here's what we're going to include with. conclude with. This is God's plea to us today uh, through the ministry of his son. We were stolen from our true love, God the Father. We were stolen by Satan. He launched the greatest campaign in the history of the universe to get us back. God created us for intimacy with him. He sent personal messengers. He used beauty and affliction to recapture our hearts. After all, has, all else failed, he conceived the most daring of plans. Under the cover of night, he stole into the enemy's camp incognito, the ancient of days, disguised as a newborn. Praise the Lord. I recommend a sincere study of the claims of Jesus uh, to anyone. Um, who wants eternal life. Thank you very much.
Ten thousand years and then. Four 